What's going on guys, John Alder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to create a cool little status bar for our image viewing app using Kinter and Python. Alright guys, in the last video we created this image viewing app. And this video we're going to create this status bar here at the bottom that sort of updates dynamically as we click the buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. So this status bar is actually fairly simple. We're just going to use a label. We've already used labels in the past lots of times. We know how to do that. But we're going to take a little twist to it. We're going to add a few new things that you haven't seen before in order to sort of make it look like a status label in order to update it uh, dynamically and in order to sort of stick it to the bottom of the screen like this. So to get started, let's just create a new label. I'm going to call it status and set this equal to a label. And then we want this to be in root and we want the text to equal what image one of five. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And what I've done here is I've just created a new file and I just copied all the text from our last video. If you didn't watch that video, go back and watch it to see where all this code came from. So now we can save this. And I'm just going to save it in our GUI directory. And I'm going to call it status.py. Okay, so right off the bat looking at this, this is not great, right? We're putting image one of five. How do we know there's five images? Well, we know because we just built this and we know there's five of them. But it's conceivable that you won't know how many images there are. If your program has hundreds of images or millions of images, you're not going to go through and count them all by hand. That would be crazy. If it's dynamic and you're adding more images as you go, you're not going to know how many images. So we need to figure out a way to do this programmatically without just hard coding it in there like this. So what we can do is we can call the len function, L-E-N, and that'll give us the length of a thing. And what thing? Well, we can just take our list here, our image list, and run a len on it. So let's just do that. Let's concatenate, and let's call the len function. And then we just pass in image underscore list, right? Now, this will almost work, but not quite, because this returns a number, because it's counting how many images or how many you know items are in this list, and there are five. Well, five is a number, and you can't add a number to a string, and this is what that is right there, it's the string. So we need to convert this to a string. So we can call the str function, the string function, and just pass that in, okay. So that should work, yeah. So let's throw this up on the screen and see if it worked correctly. So I'm gonna go down to the very bottom, and let's call status dot grid. And we want this to be in row what two and column equals zero. And we want this to span all three of our columns. Okay, so let's save this and run it, make sure it worked correctly. Let's close the old one. Clear the screen. Okay, so Python status dot pi. Pull this up. And okay, so it's correctly calculated that there are five images, but you know, nothing happens yet because we haven't programmed it to. Also, it's down here at the bottom, but it's right in the middle and it doesn't have a border or anything like that. So we need to kind of fix that. So let's close this and let's come back up here to the top where we've defined this thing. And let's do some things. First, we want to create a background or not a background, a border. So to do that, we can call the BD function of the widget and set this equal to one, right? We also want it to sort of look like it's sunken down a little bit because status bars usually are sort of sunken a little bit. So we can call relief, R-E-L-I-E-F, I before E, yep, except after C, and we want this to be sunken, right? So let's save this and just give it a quick run and see if it worked. Okay, it's definitely got a border and it's definitely sunken. And one thing you'll notice is there's some space between these buttons. 
I forgot I did that and I didn't tell you about it. So to get that, I just came down here to the very bottom of our program and I found the last button, button forward, and I added a pad Y of 10 just to give it that little 10 pixels or whatever of space between there. Because otherwise, if we close this and let's see, let's just take this off real quick. Save it and run it again. You can see it's scrunched right up there. So we don't like that too much. So I'm going to add this back and save it. So, okay, so far so good, but it's very small and it's right in the middle. So how do we stretch it all the way across the bottom? Well, we need to add something called sticky. And I'm not sure if I've talked about this in other videos yet, but the grid system and pack two for that matter has a kind of a navigational system and it's based on sort of a compass, north, south, east, and west, right? So north is up, south is down, east would be to the right, and west would be to the left. And so we can, we can tell this to stretch in any direction. So we wanna stretch left to right. So that's from west to east. So to do that, we go W plus E, right? So let's save this and run it and see what that did. Okay, so very cool. It's stretched all the way across, but it's still in the middle. So how do we change that? Well, we come up here to the label and we can add a couple of things here. We can anchor this uh, underscore or un lowercase a-n-c-h-o-r. We can anchor this in a direction. So we want it to be on the right side. So we would anchor that east. So if we save this, and run it. We can see sure enough, now it's over here. Very cool. If we wanted it over here, we could just change this to W for West, save it and run it. Boom, now it's over here. Very cool. And uh, yeah, pretty simple. So let's go ahead and exit this and I'm going to change this back. I like it the other way. So I'm going to put it on East save it. Okay, so it looks good. It's where we want it to be. It's anchored in the right spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we need to create some functionality. So I'm going to copy this. And what we need to do is whenever we click a button, either the forward button, or the back button, we need to update our label. So I'm going to paste this in here. Oops. I'm also going to come down here to the bottom and grab this because we want this to update whenever we click the button. We want it to update on the screen, so we need to paste that in here. Okay, so now we need to fix this thing right here. It's showing image one of whatever. Now this part updates dynamically. That already works, but this part does not. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to put a quotation marks and we want to concatenate a couple of things. So what do we want? to output. Well, we want to output whatever number that we're currently on. And luckily for us, we already have that number. We passed it into this function at the beginning. So whenever we click this button, we're already passing that number in. So I can just copy this and come down here and just paste that in here. But remember again, this is going to return a number, an integer, and you can't concatenate an, an integer with a string. So once again, we need to convert this to a string using the str function. I just pass that into that. Um, okay, so that should work. Let's save this and run it just to make sure that it did. I make a lot of mistakes, so I like to run things often. So, okay, two of five, three of five, four of five, five of five. Now when we go back, it doesn't update. So we need to fix that, obviously. And to do that, we just need to make the same change we just made to the forward button, just need to make it on the back button. So I'm just gonna copy this, come down to the back function, paste that in there, give some space here. And if I was a, a good coder, I'd put some comments, you know, update status bar or something, right? But I'm not particularly a good coder when it comes to that sort of thing. So, okay, let's save this and run it. And hopefully, so if we go forward, we're on image two. If we go back, back to image one. 
we go all the way to the end, we're on image 505. If we then go back, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it seems to work. So that's at least one way to create a status bar. It's probably not the only way, but it works really, really simply and really easily. Uh, the programming to create the functionality of it is really straightforward. Really, the big thing that we learned is this sticky W and E, and what else? This border thing and the relief thing and the anchor thing. I guess those are sort of new, uh, but those are just basic label things, really. So very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.